This week's episode of The Tech is brought to you by Thunderwood College, the best place on the entire internet ever to get a degree in things. So, um, you know, I, I didn't get a degree because I'm a dumbass, so I decided to go online to Thunderwood College because that's really how you do it these days. You go online, you pay a bunch of money, you get a degree. I found out that some of my friends that had degrees had, had just gone online and paid for them. How is that legit? That's not legit, as it turns out. But a lot of people, that's what they do that. They pay the money. So anyway, there's Thunderwood College now. So I went on there, and it's free. It's like the first one that it knows it's a scam. So it's like, you know what? You want a diploma? Screw going to these other places to get a diploma. We'll just give you one for free. So they give you this fancy diploma here. I've got mine here. I got a doctorate, as a matter of fact. <laughs> it was free, so I figured I may as well get a doctorate. And I'm a, a doctorate. I've got a degree of fine arts in the healing touch. Um... Yeah. I mean, you can pick whatever you want. It doesn't have to be like, you know, a degree in like health or science or anything like that. You can pick fine arts and then you can pick healing touch. So, you know, they had this kind of thing on BBSs like back in like 1992. You could totally download a diploma off of BBS and, you know, fill it in and print it out on your Epson LQ850 dot matrix printer. I kind of want to go to like a job interview with this thing. And like with the most absurd diploma you've ever heard of. (laughs) Like neuromuscular anthropological astrology. (laughs) <laughs> or something like that let's talk about some news <laughs> that's really horrifying yep so uh, you know everyone plays the, the uh, six degrees of kevin bacon uh yeah yeah everybody plays that so google has decided to build their own kevin bacon calculator moving right along it's like a search engine you can just put someone's name in and it'll do the six degrees for you i guess it was like that was probably like a job for an intern they're like hey Go have fun. Yeah, Go. this is this is one of the fun things to come out of Facebook is the open graph research. Mm-hmm. And uh, Facebook is basically like, oh, uh, Facebook users are basically uh, 5.2 degrees away from each other. And it's like, wow, there's a mathematical proof behind that. Really? Yeah, it's really interesting. Facebook users, huh? What yeah. About the- yeah I mean, Facebook would have the proof that people are connected to other people by X number of degrees of separation. Wow. So it's anybody, not just Kevin Bacon. I thought Kevin Bacon was, spe- was special. Not anymore. Mm-hmm. Cry my eyes out. Uh, eBay has a new logo. No longer does the logo overlap. And look at it there with those shoes. It, I don't know about that guy's pants, though. The roll-up thing was was so last year. This year, we're not going to be doing the roll-up pants thing anymore. So once he gets the memo, the fashion police are going to catch him. He's not going to be doing that anymore. But the eBay logo is nice there on his bag. I'm really horrified right now. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, um, God. I turned on a regular television set, and that's what goes on all day long. That's news, you know. I thought the thinner font looked slightly, you know, more, you know, Web 2.0. The, oh, yeah, they're just catching up, I guess. I think they lost something, though, because their old logo, <laughs> if you were to, you know, assemble a logo using things that you bought from eBay, it would look a lot like the old logo. Let's look at the old logo here. You know, horribly mismatched yeah, and they- <laughs> slightly weird. <laughs> what a jumbled mess. Weird Al has that song about stuff he bought on eBay. It's kind of like that. Yeah. Using the Google color scheme, pretty much. Why is YOLO so big? I have no idea. I've, I've never heard anyone say YOLO, but I don't watch Jersey Shore, so maybe they say it on there. But it's YOLO. You know what YOLO is, right? It's all, People yeah. on Reddit talk about it like it's used, but I think the only time that they ever use it is when they're complaining about it. Every time I hear it, I think of the color yellow, and for just a half a second, I'm wondering, what's so cool about the color yellow? I don't <laughs> <laughs> what? What's happening now? But maybe I'm an old fart. So you only live once. Is yellow is it's kind of like carpe diem for retards, you know? So that's what we have here. So this dude is driving 120 miles an hour and drunk, and he texts Yolo about you know his activities, and then dies. Huh. Proving that you do only live once. See, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that that this is a result of that this whole like psychological affliction that we have now which is you know everyone is a snowflake and everyone is special and so now what is happening is like you are a dumbass no i'm not a dumbass yolo and as if it's some kind of excuse or magical you know get out of jail free card that's wrong and we should put an end to that well they are putting an end to it through uh oh natural selection oh yeah well (laughs) i I kind of feel bad because there was other people in the car and they all died as well i'm not sure if they were drunk but they were with him and he's a dumbass I, I hate this kind of thing because, well, I mean, at least he's off the road. But what about the innocent victims around? So, I don't know. I, I guess natural selection needs to move a little faster. It's still a little, it's, I mean, it's still horrifying that, you know, society, this type of thing should not be possible if society is advancing. All right, let's get into some real news. So, Alibaba. 
Have you guys heard of Alibaba? Alibaba is a website, and I think I just told you about it this week, right? Yeah, it's... Uh, I've been looking at Alibaba for years. It's interesting. Yeah, it's a really interesting. Somebody likened it to uh, the Amazon of, you know, China it's, and Asia. You know, that's that's not exactly correct because Alibaba, will, it's it, while it will function like Amazon, where you can go on there and you can get a good price and you can buy anything from a sweater to a cat sack to a computer. You can buy anything you want on there, books, whatever. At the same time, you can buy unbranded products... Uh, stuff that doesn't have a sticker on it, you know, you can go on there and buy a Z77 motherboard. You can buy a whole crate of them and you can get a discount. So it allows U.S. Uh, retailers to buy in bulk and put their own sticker on it. So a lot of the different companies that you buy from have gone to Alibaba and imported, uh, you know, tankers full of stuff. So a lot of the stuff from Asia comes from there. Acer was working with Alibaba and they were going to be releasing a phone. It's uh, based on, um, see, Alibaba has a cloud computing uh, OS they developed themselves. And the interesting thing about Alibaba's OS is that it runs all Android apps. I'm sure there are some issues with some, but it runs Android apps. But it's not technically Android. It's not Android, exactly. It runs its own apps as well. It's called uh, Alien, Alien OS, or Alien. I'm not sure where the emphasis or would, you know, which syllable has the emphasis, but Alien OS. So Google uh, reportedly told Acer that if they do this, that they're going to be out of the Android game. And, you know, the only person saying this right now is Alibaba because Alibaba had this going on and all of a sudden Acer backed out. And that, that is what Alibaba, we're looking at their, their blog right now. Um, and here's, what, here's a statement they said. Uh, we believe that by introducing the Alien OS, we are giving consumers and hardware, ma hardware makers more options, which is the foundation of a healthy and strong market. We think that it should be left to the market to, this, to decide. So they're really upset over Google's decision. And you had you had something in Google's defense. If this is all alleged right now, yeah, we haven't heard from Acer about this. You got to keep that in mind. Acer hasn't really said one way or the other. And so on the surface, if you're looking at this, it looks like Google's trying to ex exert you know more control than they really should. It's like some Walmart stuff. You yeah, know? yeah. It's like Walmart technique. But in defense of Google, I'm going to say that one of the problems with Android right now is the fragmentation from a whole bunch of different. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, different uh, vendors and manufacturers. That's one of the biggest strengths of iOS. Yes. One yeah. of, if you have an iPhone, until, up until now, they've all pretty much been the same, but I'll let you continue. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, just iPhone, um, the iPhone platform has been very closed, you know, very, you know, there's one model, you can get different capacities, but basically everything's the same. Same with the iPad, resolution fixed. It was easy to work with all this kind of stuff. There's this handy chart that is kind of nice as far as giving you giving developers and people that may you know it's like what features you know iPhotos on this one GPS is on that one and here's a table and so Apple's starting to have the problems with fragmentation but what happened to Google with Android was something they didn't expect when they did Android 2.0 and it's so successful a lot of manufacturers just ran with Android 2.0 and they all are doing their own thing it's like a symphony without a conductor you know noise theater it's kind of fringe everybody's doing it in New York <laughs> <laughs> having that orchestra without a conductor means that the consumer suffers the people that are using android suffer because something will work on one android device but not another and that this custom operating system that runs android really strikes to the heart of that because you can run android apps yeah, on... right there's the os look at that so yeah i mean it looks like every other os i mean ever I, w I would like to see the business case and the use case for for what they're doing with their own custom OS to see if it's really a customized Android OS or see if it's something from the ground up. Because my suspicion is that it's just a customized Android OS. Right. And Google, if they can, if Google can avoid fragmentation and get the carriers to leave them alone long enough to allow Google to update the software on your on your handsets, Google's going to take over the world. I mean, with their with their phones, if they can push out an update for ice cream sandwich or jelly bean or whatever. To all phones. And everybody to can just Android go phones. to Google and download it. That is the holy grail. That's what they need. That's what they're working on. If you guys haven't seen Alibaba, I'll open it up real quick. Just before we move on. So this is Alibaba. It does kind of resemble Amazon, but you can get, you know, for instance, you can get like this stand for your iPad. You can buy one or you can go and buy a whole tanker load and put your sticker on it or whatever. All right, let's talk about some legal stuff. Uh, unfortunately, the U.S. House has passed or has uh, reauthorized. Uh, Warrantless wiretapping. Uh, yeah, FISA. So FISA has uh, been reauthorized. There's going to be five more years of warrantless wiretapping, email uh, monitoring. This is crazy. Uh, there are a few champions against this in Congress, and that, that's always a good thing. Uh, Gerald Nader, he's a New York congressman, said that the American people deserve better. And he's totally right. I can't believe I live in a country that has to spy on my email. So they're looking at our notes right now. 
earlier this week, there was a massive GoDaddy outage. And at first, Anonymous kind of like came up and said, hey, we did it because GoDaddy, uh, they supported uh, PIPA and SOPA. They've supported all of that nonsense. They're a terrible company. They're the biggest registrar um, there is, the biggest ICANN uh, accredited registrar. I'm not sure if that makes them the biggest in the world or not. But um, yeah, they, they support PIPA and SOPA. And every time a client comes and they're like, hey, we're on GoDaddy, I'm like, okay, there's, a, there's an immediate frustration fee built on top of whatever fee I'm going to charge them if I'm going to be designing a little website, doing some side work or something. So I'm saying don't use GoDaddy. However, it was not an attack, a DDoS attack, or anything like that. It was incompetence on GoDaddy's part. Yeah, they had some sort of internal router failure or router misconfiguration or something like that. GoDaddy went down and pretty much all of the websites that use GoDaddy as a registrar went down. That is unreal. For the biggest to go down like that, hugely yeah. incompetent. Yeah, interestingly, after they came back up, they were using uh, VeriSign uh, for DNS. So I don't know if that's a permanent change or a temporary change, but if you do it- More like, oh crap, get it, some, do something, hurry. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, if you do the if you do the who is on the, it was a DNS failure, and if you do the who is and try to figure it out, then all of the DNS traffic was routed through Verizon at the time, or uh, not Verizon, VeriSign. The, all of the DNS traffic was routed through VeriSign at the time. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I mean, you, you know something, guys? If you want to, like, judge a company, take a look at the top of the company. Look at the CEO and look at the CEO's <laughs> moron children. <laughs> <laughs> like, over in Africa, shooting endangered animals and... <laughs> yeah, that was fairly. T- I mean, come on now, really, <laughs> honestly, it's like I'm wealthy when you know blah 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 dot com. You know, I've got a I've got a dot com company. What's the first thing we do? I'm gonna go to Africa and kill a rhino. <laughs> kill a rhino, then I want to drag a leopard around behind the car. That's almost like those Adelphia guys having like the uh, the twenty thousand dollar elephant foot umbrella stand, and it's <laughs> like. You know that there's a comedian and he's like, you know, my oh, my, my parents have an umbrella stand that was twenty thousand dollars. Uh, it's called their car. What's his name? Uh, uh, Louis Black. Louis Black. Yeah. <laughs> they stole. Was it like several billion dollars or whatever? Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, they stole this much money because you know, you gotta buy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay, the iPhone five has been announced. We're gonna talk about this for just a minute. There's a lot of people that have been telling me to shut up about Apple. I cannot shut up about Apple. Apple is extremely important right now. They're in the middle of something that's way bigger than Apple, the broken patent system. That's why we're talking about Apple. Not because we want to talk about Apple themselves, but because they shape so much of the world around them. Therefore, let's talk about the iPhone 5. Uh, For me, it was a bit underwhelming, not a huge step forward, and it also brought uh, the fragmentation to the table, which we just talked about, because the resolution is a little wonky on this thing. Um, Also, I was expecting the specs to be quite a bit crazier than they were. I will say that the new CPU is ridiculously fast, uh, I'm not sure how it competes head-on with the Snapdragon. You know, I haven't seen the two. You know, the quad-core is also really nice. But the dual-core Snapdragon is just about as fast as the quad-core Snapdragon in the look, Samsung Galaxy look, S3. All, all you really need to know about the iPhone 5 is they made it taller, so now it has a 4-inch screen. And by taller, I mean you get an extra row of icons. Yes. So it's a, it's a weird resolution, and old applications are now going to have legacy black bars. The screen is closer to a 16x9 resolution, so you can watch movies in 16x9, and that's kind of nice. Yeah, 1336 by 640 so it's not 720p like all the Android phones that are out. They basically had to make it bigger to fit battery and LTE electronics. And in a delicious twist of irony, uh, Samsung and others will be suing because of the LTE circuitry that's in there because Apple doesn't have the right to use that technology, apparently. Everyone said they were going to sue, and Apple didn't care. That's the thing. Apple... They fight for their own patents, and then when they're infringing someone else's patents, they're like, just go ahead and do it. We're Apple. Screw them. So I, I don't like that cavalier attitude from them, you know, especially when they just want a massive lawsuit. They, they don't care. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. So anyway, I put, uh, you know, like a comparison up. Uh, of course, the, the Samsung Galaxy X3 that is listed on Tech Syndicate uh, on this chart that I stole from, where did I steal this from? Mashable.com. Uh, that's the, the, the specs on this are from the U.S. version. The European version has a quad core, which is awesome. But not that much faster. Well, the reason the U.S. version doesn't have a quad-core, I feel like I have to point this out, is because the American cellular network is so crappy that your phones have to put out so much cancer-inducing radiation to actually make it to the tower (laughs) that it runs the battery down. So, I mean, come on. Really? There's there's not enough power to power a quad core and the tower that's on the other side of the moon that you have to hit. So, I mean, honestly. I, the iPhone 5 does have more battery life, but still less than the 
the, the droid razor and the samsung s Gal- or the galaxy s but more than the 4s it, it, well but it's still you know on par with the 3g so like the 4s went downhill a lot and now, and now we've come back up to where we used to be i mean honest to god get it together Apple. so it's yeah it's not a big step forward and uh, i don't know i have a hard time endorsing any phone that doesn't have an, a storage you know slot well, anyway let's move on i'm not going to yell about that too much if you want to buy one you're going to buy one because you're not going to care you're just going to think that it's better. So Jimmy Kimmel did this thing where he um, he went out on the streets and told people, a lot of the people that owned iPhone 4Ss, told them that they uh, they had the new iPhone 5, and he would you know ask them to take a look at it. Funny you guys have is, to see that. Yeah, the funny thing is, I'm going to play a second of it. The funny thing is, is that there was no iPhone 5 present. Because they don't have any iPhone 5s yet, they were giving people an iPhone 4S. And just the idea that they're holding a new Apple product, of course, they love it. And they say it's better than the 4S that's in their pocket. It's so much faster and lighter. They've got the same phone in their pocket. They're being... Uh, let's just play and see some reactions here. The new iPhone 5 just came out today. We want to know if you'll take a look at it. Tell us how it compares to the last iPhone. I'd love to. Oh, it's way better. Yeah, it's nice. That's definitely <laughs> noticeably better. It's a little, a little thinner. Mind you, that guy it's has like an iPhone for us. Seems a little bit faster. Yeah. Faster, lighter. Feels uh, heavier. Feels heavier? I think so. A lot lighter than the last one. This is a lot faster as well. Mine's gonna take forever. So this one's faster? Yeah, definitely faster. Right on. Oh, it looks very nice. Very nice, very updated. Oh my god, it feels a lot lighter and just more, um, just a lot more higher quality. And it's got, um, if you drop it, it looks like it's not gonna break. Like this one has a million times. The screen is clear, HD. The colors are brighter. Oh, it has There's no hope for society. <laughs> video front and back? That's cool. This doesn't have that. So you like it better than the last one? Yeah, I have the 4S. Yeah? Yeah. I'm always open for a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> He's holding a 4S, talking about how much better it is than the 4S that's in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that just makes me happy. <laughs> so a former Apple executive, a French guy by the name of Jean-Louis Gossier, I, I'm, the French language is my worst, so I have no idea. There's going to be like 90 comments like, no. The, the, anyway, he had something to say about Apple. Uh, he said they didn't invent anything, and the vocabulary that he used is very familiar. So I'm going to go ahead and read something, and I don't know if it came from a video that we made or not. Oh, I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah. I'm I, pretty sure we nailed that one. Yeah, and, it could, and I'm not sure if it's the same video that they were talking about on Yolked this week. I have no idea. I don't even think they mentioned this on Yolked this week. I uh, guess yeah, he says, uh, software is all ones and zeros after all. Uh, the quantity and order may vary, but that's about it. Should I read this with French accent? I think I should. <laughs> Hardware is protons and neutrons. That doesn't work. It's more German. Electrons and photons buzzing around because we're talking about that. Uh, nothing original. Apple didn't invent anything. The iPad is simply their variation, their interpretation of a well-known tablet recipe. Dun, dun, dun. Remember <laughs> the day that you came in? Hair kind of wild and going, hey, I've got it. <laughs> Apple's not an invention company. Apple's a recipe company. We're like, get the camera. Get the damn camera now. <laughs> Last thing about Apple, it's about Steve Wozniak, actually. So it's not exactly about Apple. But, uh, you know, he's been talking about the iPhone 5. And he said he hopes that the, the camera is better than his, um, than his Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the Galaxy S3. Oh, Woz. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention that he did make comment about the, the latest patent dispute and the verdict, which, you know, Apple beat samsung the jury said that they have to give him a billion dollars so they, they asked him what he what he thought about the verdict and the quote is i hate it i don't think the decision of california will hold and i don't agree with it very small things i don't really call that innovative yeah you, you the, okay let's keep in mind the context of a patent a patent is a 20-year government granted monopoly that's a pretty significant thing. A 20-year monopoly versus the scope and scale and engineering required for the invention. I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like that there, there's a comparison between the two. Well, it's a bit different if you have some sort of an invention like uh, that's not a rounded edge on an icon, you know? that's They've got to, they've got to work on the patent uh, situation. It's completely out of, out of hand. Um, and yeah, well, Speaking of that, we already mentioned that HTC is going to be giving Apple a hard time. Their patents, uh, Judge... You know, everyone's like, I, I got an email. Someone was like, dude, you need to shut up. Uh, HTC has got nothing on Apple. Samsung has nothing on Apple. Uh, well, a judge has already taken a look at the HTC's patents, and he says they are likely valid. So, uh, essentially, um, he said he has to be pretty darn certain that a U.S. patent is invalid, and right now they look likely valid. Well, that means that there's a good chance that there may be an injunction blocking the sale of the iPhone 5. 
<laughs> we're really beating this topic up, but that's what's going on in the world right now. Google hasn't really developed a massive patent portfolio. That's why they just spent $12.5 billion to acquire Mo Motorola Mobility. That's very hard to say. Motorola Mobility, Motorola Mobility. I can't do it. Say it five times. I'll send you a prize or something. Because um, they needed those 17,000 patents. They really didn't focus on that. Um, and here, uh, David Lai. Louis. Louis. Louis, Louis, I think. I think. I was talking to Bloomberg, and he had an interesting quote. He said, we, we didn't really believe rounded corners were patentable. Sort of a wake-up call for Google. Uh, we just didn't buy into the notion of protecting your IP, and it was like a wake-up call. So, Well, to be fair, a lot of what the core innovation is inside Google are secret. And so the trade-off for patenting something is that the recipe and the design that goes into the patent is that it becomes public knowledge. Right. And so there are a lot of companies that have, you know, formulas for chemicals and formulas for this, that, and the other, and they don't patent their formula because they'd rather keep it secret. Right. But at the same time, now, Google knows that you can patent rudimentary things like rounded edges, and that's going to be dangerous because Google could patent the entire world. Recently, we've been talking about a three-strike system that a lot of the ISPs are going to be instigating here in America. And uh, it's already in, in, taken effect in France, and they've got their first conviction. And what's even stranger is that the, uh, the gentleman being convicted wasn't even doing, wasn't even downloading anything. He was convicted for some Rihanna songs that his girlfriend was downloading. She came up and said, I was the one downloading them. She was trying to, you know, translate things through Google Translate. There was a language barrier, and he admitted to, quote-unquote, not protecting his connection enough to stop the download, and therefore has been, been fined. So he's going to have to pay $194, which is not ridiculous, but... <laughs> yeah, the American version of that was $600,000. Yeah, and that's way more reasonable. But the thing is, is that now they're going to be going after everyone because they have this three-strike system, and it's based on your IP address. So, I mean, it's just going to be like an endless line of people. There's already 17 people in line behind him to be tried. Now, here's the interesting thing where you guys should all grab your torches and pitchforks. We heard about a system a couple of weeks ago that was automatic you know ip reporting and takedown like the dmc the dmca, DMCA yeah. automated system where it's like oh you're doing something wrong i'm going to take you offline it's only we're, we're a gnat's breath away from both of those systems being married together and then it's like oh you got three strikes and it's like what are you talking about and you have to prove that you're innocent right that's going to be a mess we'll just have to list i mean i'm sure there's going to be some isps and hopefully the market will take care of itself but there's going to be some people that are in remote areas that won't have access to the good isps they're going to be on the bad isps that have the three strike system so they're going to be out of luck and that's not good for the rest of the world it's an unpopular opinion but i'm of the opinion that once you've licensed music like once i license a digital copy of you know a song or something like that i should be able to get it in any form that i want if the on CD, any of your devices because i have a license for it if i accidentally destroy the media the media doesn't really represent the license right and that, i mean but you know no that would require rational thought on the part of uh, law and policy makers and well, that's just not going to happen all right it's time to loosen up and talk about hardware i'm actually very excited to talk about some hardware because the gtx 660 came out this week came out like well today you'll be watching this video like tomorrow um so that's really awesome. There's been a lot of reviews on the internet. NVIDIA has been really supporting Linux. And they've also got some new drivers for Windows out. But first off, I want to talk about uh, Linux performance with, um, with NVIDIA's newest drivers. Their newest drivers in Linux are about the same speed as they are in Windows 7. Wow, that's really interesting. That's a huge, but what's even funnier is with Ubuntu and Unity enabled, it's much, much slower. So when you have Unity, for some reason, that desktop interface is slower. Uh, the fastest, well, the, this website is tested. We're looking at uh, uh, Pharonix.com. The, the fastest that they tested was Kubuntu, and which is almost just as fast as Windows. I'll put up a link here. They've tested, you know, Unreal Engine and several other things. So I'll put a link up there. Um, also, some new drivers are out from NVIDIA. They had support for the GTX 660 Ti and the GTX 650 and the GTX 660. Um, let you guys check that out. I, I want to talk about the GTX 660 for a second. And... Talk about how it is in comparison to the similar price cards because a lot of you guys are going to be asking questions like oh this new one's out should i get that one or should i get like a 7870 or a 7950 or a 7850 is about the about the closest as far as price goes well i want you guys to know that amd has dropped the prices on all the seven series cards yet again so it's going to be really really competitive like insanely competitive um break that down for a second all right so the 7870 comes in at around 240 i just got two of those for 200 bucks each 
They're wow. on sale for one ninety nine each. I ordered two of the Radeon 7870s. I'm going to put those in a system and test them. I'm trying to get a couple of GTX 660s. I've talked to EVGA. Maybe they'll send some. Maybe not. I'll call MSI or somebody else. I don't know. But I want to put those head-to-head because I haven't seen too many charts showing two versus two. Anyway, I'm going to go down the list of a few games here and compare the GTX 660 to the 7870, which is about 10 bucks more. So do you get anything extra when you spend 10 extra dollars getting a 7870? Uh, it's definitely better than the similarly priced 7850. But in Battlefield 2, the GTX 660 is about two frames per second faster. In Crisis 2, it's about the same speed. I mean, like, one's one second faster at one resolution, and then at a different resolution, the other one's one frame per second faster. In Deus Ex, it's like one to two frames slower. That's human revolution. In, uh, in Hard Reset, it's about two frames per second faster than the 7870. In Just Cause 2, about three frames per second faster. And um, in Max Payne 3, it's about five frames per second slower than the 7870. Uh, the temp is nice. 61 on full load. So you can push this. You can overclock it. That's really nice. And 30 at idle. Uh, the 7870 gets around 70 degrees at full load. So that's a hot card. You can overclock it a little bit, but I would not recommend uh, overclocking that much. Um, I mean, all in all, with an overclocked 660, you're in really good shape. If you overclock it, you can get an extra four or five frame, frames per second, and that makes a pretty big difference, especially if you look online and it's 10 bucks cheaper than, than the 7870. Now, why would you go with an AMD if you're a Bitcoin miner? The OpenCL is stupid fast. If you want to do like folding at home, the AMD is faster. Uh, if you have programs that take advantage of OpenCL, I really like the AMD card. If you have a program that uses CUDA, well, then you can use the NVIDIA and also NVIDIA PhysX. So that's your choices. If you have a little bit extra money, go ahead and get a 7950 or a 670. Those are better, but they're a little bit more expensive. Check this out, guys. This is really ridiculous. So um, Western Digital is working on a hard drive that's going to ex- give you extreme capacity. helium field. Helium. Drives. Yeah, helium. helium field. It's a noble gas. And for those of you out there that play the <laughs> stock market, you probably should invest in helium because we don't capture it off natural gas wells anymore. The reality with helium is that... You know, uh, most of the helium comes from the that's being sold today comes from the National Reserves because we thought we were going to have helium dirigibles, and uh, that never happened. So it's like, oh, we got all this helium, but now we don't. We're running out. So invest in helium. Now, helium dirigibles would have been great. I mean, yeah, everybody running around in like pocket watches and stuff. Oh, and for you smart asses out there that are like, oh, why would they? Why would they not put it in a vacuum? Blah blah blah. Well, it turns out hard drives actually need some kind of a gas in there because they use the Bernoulli effect to have the heads float just above the magnetic platters. They don't actually touch the platters. Well, that makes sense since it's such a lightweight gas. I mean, why didn't they think of this earlier? Well, I think they had, but it uh, it has less turbulence and a um, whole bunch of other things, and it it works better than air. It seems like the technology has been around. If if you look really carefully on a modern hard drive, you'll actually see that they have a breather hole to maintain air pressure equalization. Mm-hmm. There's a little a little tiny HEPA filter and you know a uh, an eraser sized hole, and that's so that as the air pressure changes around the hard drive, the hard drive can breathe. You think we'll need to like go pump extra helium into our hard drives like a basketball? Like oh was... <laughs> no, <laughs> we gotta put more helium in. <laughs> no, if your hard drive ever leaks and the helium gets out, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, all of a sudden your graphics card is gonna be like. Zzzz. <laughs> be like, hey, why is my graphics card sound like a chipmunk? Yeah, helium. Oh, the helium's the, out. Those are the those are also enterprise grade hard drives. So they've got like seven platters in them, which is nuts. Good lord. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit of science for you guys. Now we've all said that the neglect is bad for children, but I wanted to mention this, to, especially like today, because there's so much media, and it's very easy just to take a child and be like, oh, just put that in their hands and like, here, play this video game or go in the other room. I've got stuff to do, like grown up stuff, like play on reddit all day or play wow or uh, neglect scientifically now is bad for children's development it they have it can have extremely negative effects on their mental development especially so if you don't want to raise a moron hang out with your kids that's all i'm going to say i don't want to preach too much on that but i just want to say that the science that now there's science behind this there's studies. Neuroscience. Yeah, neuroscience. Not like, we did a study and these kids were idiots and these were smart and these got petted by their parents and these got... No, this is like more folds in the brain type studies. Like their brains develop differently. So, pretty cool stuff. I'll leave a link to the article there so you can take a look at it. All right, let's talk about gaming. Gearbox wants to make more Duke Nukem. So, in like 2018... No, no, it'll probably be like more like 2027. <laughs> Around the time of Singularity, 
<laughs> we're going to see like the next Duke Nukem game. And by that time, society's going to be so completely stupid that you'll be able to, like, in Duke Nukem, you'll be able to go to Starbucks and get a hand job. <laughs> the franchise is probably not completely dead, but after Duke Nukem Forever 2000, it probably will be. I remember playing the demo of that, and, like, they, the, the humor was so forced in that game. It was just like, I'm going to say something crude, because that's what's funny. That's not what the old, the old game was more, I mean, it was crude, but it was subtle. They didn't get it at all. I don't want them to make another game. <laughs> don't do that I pre-ordered it but my receipt was so illegible that they wouldn't let me have it are you serious? yeah I mean when I say I pre-ordered it I mean I pre-ordered it like 50 years ago <laughs> it was like part of your college pension or something yeah. <laughs> oh I've also got a copy of Duke Nukem pre-ordered yeah well the miracle there is I was actually able to find the receipt <laughs> but it was unreadable and then... <laughs> it was just yeah 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 face palm is the appropriate response <laughs> Well, at least you were saved. Yeah. You had stuff to do otherwise. Um, if you guys are, you ever played Baller's Gate? Uh, yeah. One or two? Yeah, a long time ago, yeah. There's a mod team here. I'm just going to put a link to this, but they're remaking Baldur's Gate 2 in the Dragon Age, uh, in the Dragon Age em uh, engine. They're remaking Baldur's Gate 2 in the Dragon Age engine, and it looks phenomenal. It's in 3D, and there's a lot of kids out there that haven't played this game. The game's a lot of fun. One of the best RPGs ever made, Baldur's Gate 2. It was a great game. I highly recommend you guys check this out. It's not finished yet, but it's moving along nicely. Speaking of mods, look at that countdown on the screen. You know what that countdown's for? Source engine? Uh, Black Mesa Source? Yes. Yes. Man. By the time this video's online, people will be playing it already. I'm going to stream this tomorrow on Twitch TV, even though they don't pay me, those bastards. So, yeah. That is be... That would, that would, what? That is be fairly epic. That will be fairly epic. And I'll be playing some GoldenEye Source this weekend as well. So, yeah, a little Source Engine action going on here. Uh, last up, if you guys are uh, making anything for Team Fortress 2, Valve really wants Halloween stuff, so make a little money, make a silly thing, and people will buy it on the Steam Workshop. Uh, oh, yeah, Guild Wars 2. Is it 2 million players already? Yeah, they actually uh, disabled the electronic sale for a while. If, if, you, if yeah. you could get a key another way, they'd let you on. But it's like, no, we're not selling it. We, we need to catch up. Yeah, that, I mean, they're already at $2 million, even even with the, like, no sale. I predict that a uh, data center vendor for game companies will emerge because it's like this with Blizzard and it's like this with Guild Wars 2 and it's like this with any massive MMO. Mm -hmm. Like, they need an insane amount of startup capacity, but then six months later they don't need that much capacity. You know, there's a rumor. A lot of people are saying that uh, Guild Wars 2 may actually break the monthly pay model. Wow, because, that'd be nice. Yeah, because... They're doing really well, and they're attracting a lot of people. And there's so many people playing this, and there's a lot of people leaving WoW, even though WoW's still got millions more. Um, but they're going to get used to this. And, I mean, they've got their microtransaction model. Uh, the other thing I really like about Guild Wars 2, and I haven't played that, I spoke with our um, our Wicca on Guild Wars 2. Her name's Pistol. And uh, she streams over at Twitch TV uh, slash Pistol. I talked to her because she's playing this a lot. And she said that there's no, like, you, know, you, you, do, you can't pay to win. Yeah, there's some kind of a mechanic in the game where... Your friends can give you stuff, and you can buy gems and things like that, but you can't, like, it doesn't really help you win the game. Yeah, it's all about the gem system. Hmm. But yeah, you can you can buy gems with real money, you can buy gems with in-game money, and then you can give the gems away, so. I don't know what else you can buy. I'm sure there's going to be, like, hairdos and stuff. I love buying hairdos. <laughs> Guild Wars 2, hats edition. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that, yeah. That was a brilliant business move. Freaking hats. Well, make some Halloween hats. And then give them to Gabe Newell. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, send me an email. Inbox at techsyndicate.com. If you got beef. If you're a vegetarian as well. <laughs> if you have beef, chicken, or pork. Well, it, we swing <laughs> always. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Uh, I've got no ending this week. Well, yeah, we don't have any ending this week. I'm sorry. Um, that's it. It's, we're just going to trail off there. Yeah, just going to do stuff later. <laughs>